Hi, dear students. My name is Kristina Chernyak. I graduated from WIUU in 2013. I know a lot of changes took place since that time, and the Institute has another name now, it's Concordia. And uh, many changes have happened since graduation in my life too. So after working in the field of international trade for several years, I decided to change my profession. So uh, I received education, uh, a degree of uh, clinical psychologist, and now I've dedicated my life to psychological health. I do psychological consultations, uh, psychotherapy and psychoeducation. Uh, my first education in WUU had a big impact in my life. I was surprised how much it uh, helped me while I was getting my degree in psychology. And I was so glad when I received uh, an invitation from the uh, Institute to give a small lecture uh, for you, current students of Concordia. I really hoped that uh, we could have a discussion, that I could uh, ask you questions, you could ask me questions. And uh, I really wonder how you cope with all the studies nowadays when uh, you face all, the, all these challenges. However, due to war and uh, problems with electricity, nowadays it's not that much possible. So I decided to make this video for you. And uh, I would like to introduce you to the topic of nonviolent communication. I personally find this approach uh, very interesting and useful, and I hope you are going to like it as well. Nonviolent communication, or NVC, uh, is an approach uh, to communication that was created by Marshall Rosenberg uh, back in 1960s, 1970s. The primary goal of it uh, is creating empathy in conversations between people. Marshall Rosenberg believes that this is the best way to satisfy human needs. NDC is not only used for communication and uh, reaching mutual understanding between people, but it's also a great technique for self-help. Uh, it might help you reach a harmony both in relationship and uh, workplace. There have been multiple researches that found this communication model to be quite effective in terms of increasing the level of empathy. So let me come to the key points of this model. Uh, first of all, everyone is responsible for his own feelings and also is responsible for fulfilling their own needs. It might sound weird, right? But it's true. It's my responsibility to understand what I feel. Uh, it's my responsibility to understand what I want and to find a way how to get it. It's not somebody else's job. As well as you are responsible for what you feel, what you want, and how to find the ways to receive it. Second, it's taking responsibility for my actions. It means that whatever I do, I do it because I choose to do it. Even when I do things that are not pleasant or things that I do not want to do at all, I still feel, face this decision whether I do it uh, to achieve something or, or I don't. We act because we want to satisfy our needs. Even we, when we act in a weird way, it might not make any sense, still there is one. When I go to work that I don't like, I want to be secure. And money might give me that feeling of security. When I get into a relationship, uh, I need love. And even when I yell, I want me to be heard. Sometimes we use same strategies to fulfill different needs. But needs of people are universal. Uh, strategies of uh, fulfillment might differ in many ways. Uh, for instance, when somebody needs to relax, uh, he might take a bath, uh, read a book or go for a walk. The need is the same, but the strategies are different. You can find a lot of different strategies. Most of our needs can be met. Of course, uh, not all of them can be met right now, right here, not right now. Uh, so it's important to identify which of the needs are important at this moment. Understanding your feelings will help you understand your needs and follow the priorities. When we realize our needs, 
and share them with another person, we have a better chance to meet them. Uh, yet, it doesn't mean that someone will fulfill your needs right away, because at this point he might have his own needs that are more important for him. Uh, but still, the needs of every person are equally important and can be taken into account. Even though your needs might not get satisfied right away, the fact that you share your feelings, you reveal your needs, uh, while another person is listening to you, it helps you reach more understanding and enrich and deepen your relationship. Conflicts arise when we stick to only one strategy. When we only choose one strategy to satisfy some need, we don't focus on what, what is really important. When we reveal what needs we have, we might find, uh, find out uh, that they are common and try to find a third way to meet our needs. For instance, my husband wants to go to movies and I want to go uh, on a road trip. Uh, we both want to spend time together, but we choose different strategies. So, uh, in this case, we can try to find some common strategy to satisfy our need. Uh, something that we both would like to do, uh, which uh, will satisfy our mutual need. Does it make sense? However, Generating ideas for solutions will not work if we don't understand what is going on in this conflict and what is important to each person and which needs uh, we want to be fulfilled. What we really need before starting to look for a common strategy is empathic contact. If you don't really want this contact, uh, if you're not honest, uh, no beautifully and uh, correctly formulated sentences will help you to establish this agreement. And we, when we do not have a contact with ourselves, it's quite hard to show interest in other people. Here we come to the key components of establishing a contact. It's empathy and honesty. According to nonviolent communication, empathy is attentive listening uh, to the feelings and needs. It means that you accompany uh, the other person, you give him your presence, uh, without judging or giving advice. Honesty is not only about the truth, it's also about being open towards oneself and other people, uh, which is based on respect and the right to, of every person to express oneself. Please note that there is a big difference uh, if we honestly share our thoughts and judgments, uh, for instance, with what we think about uh, something or someone, or if we share our feelings and needs, how somebody's behavior uh, affects me and what needs are fulfilled or not fulfilled for me then. In nonviolent communication, uh, we mean the second understanding of honesty. For example, instead of saying uh, this game was horrible, or this movie was horrible, it was stupid, I hated it, uh, we can say that uh, I'm disappointed because I wanted to have fun and it turned out that this game or this movie did not meet my expectations. So what are the important elements of honesty? First of all, it's being aware of your intentions. Why do you want to say it? Does it help me deepen the connection between us? What do I want to achieve? Second is clarity. What exactly do I want to communicate to this other person? And third, it's form, and I will come to it uh, just in a moment. The four steps of nonviolent communication uh, will help you communicate and build a better contact uh, and understanding. So the four steps are observations, feelings, needs, and requests. So let's come to the first step. It's observations. You need to answer several questions. First of all, what happened? Uh, what did someone specifically do or say? At this point, you need to pay attention to the facts and observations. 
Think of it as if uh, what camera would record. For example, uh, this is the third time this week that you come to our meeting 15 minutes later than we agreed. Uh, remember that inter interpretations and judgments may sound like blame and criticism. For example, you could say, you're always late, I cannot rely on you. Do you see the difference between these two statements? The second step is feelings. What did I feel then? What could the other person feel? Feelings are separated from our thoughts. In NVC, uh, words that express feelings are distinguished from words and sentences which uh, contain interpretations of uh, people's behavior and the description of our thoughts. For example, uh, an interpretation uh, of thoughts uh, are also called uh, false feelings. So uh, listen to this. I feel that you don't care about me at all. And I feel as if you think I am stupid. Well, uh, here is the block of feelings. I feel frustrated and lonely. I feel irritated. Do you see the difference? Third step is identifying needs. Which of my needs are fulfilled or unfulfilled? What is important? What is it that I want? In this step, we need to pay attention to the needs that are behind our feelings. I express what is important to me at this moment. To continue the example with a friend who is late, uh, I would say that respect and keeping promises is important to me. It's important to distinguish the needs from the strategies that we choose to satisfy our needs. For example, uh, arriving on time or sending an SMS uh, that this person will be late is not my need. These are the activities that can satisfy my need and uh, I can ask for it uh, the next time. And here we come to the fourth step. It's uh, requests. Is there anything that I would like to ask someone now or maybe something that I want to ask myself? So in order to keep the request uh, being request, not a demand, we need to uh, express it in a clear and specific way. We need to understand what, where and when uh, we want. And we also need to assume that uh, we might face uh, a no. Uh, in this case, you need to keep in mind that uh, you are request might not have been a request. It might have sounded like a demand. Uh, I will give you two uh, examples. So first, uh, I've been waiting for you for so long. Uh, you are a terrible person. You're always late. I hate it. Uh, I don't feel like you are taken seriously and uh, I need you to come on time next time. Or the second example. It's uh, the third time this week that you uh, come late to our meetings. I'm sad because it's really important for me that you keep promises, uh, that you're responsible. So please, next time, if you realize that you're coming late, notify me or uh, just tell me. So, uh, do you see the difference between these two statements? And which of the statements you like better? Uh, which of the statements uh, you would prefer to hear from your friend? Thank you for listening. I hope this model was interesting for you and you can try to apply it in your life. And if you'd like to improve your communication or go deep into the NVC approach, you can make it on your own and read the book by Marshall Rosenberg, Nonviolent Communication. And of course, uh, you can do it uh, by working with a psychologist too. So thank you for your attention. Bye. So thank you for your attention. Bye.